What's up with everybody? It's your man Moyo B. I'm Nicole. And we're back in with some more reaction videos. See, I mean, we're checking out some more of Oversimplified. This is the war that changed the English language in Mini Wars 3. So I guess it changed the English language. Hmm. Yeah, It'll be interesting. interesting to see what this one's about. Yeah, see what war was. Yeah, I don't even know. So we can dive right into it. England in the Middle Ages. The sun is shining. Hey. The birds are singing. Hmm. The children are playing in the village square. What a wonderful time to be alive. Hey, you're dying of dysentery. Dang. And also we're being raided by Vikings. What an awful time to be alive. <laughs> Dang. It's the year 900. <laughs> Europe is a Viking's wet dream. Raids ah. galore. Ah, hey, okay. you want to go raid Paris? Okay. That particular raid didn't go too well, but the King of the Franks said, you guys are pretty tough and scary. How about we give you land in northern France, and in return, you protect us from other Vikings. Ah. And it was agreed. The Vikings mm. set up the Duchy of Normandy, and then they went full on French, converting to Christianity, learning the language, and making babies with the locals. Mm. England also had its fair share of Viking problems. In the 800s, Danish Vikings had conquered most of the country, but the Anglo-Saxons eventually managed to kick them out, although mm. they left behind a bunch of Viking settlers. Now this guy's king. He sucks. Replace him with <laughs> his brother. And he was like, hey baby, how you doing? And had a son, and then turned around was like, hey baby, how you doing? Uh -huh. And had another son. And then he died and no one was sure which son to make king. This one, because uh -huh. he's older. Not if I have anything to do with it. Mm. That works for us too. Dang. Then he grew up and married the Duke of Normandy's daughter and had a bunch of kids. Remember this one. He's important. Then his advisors yeah, came to him and said, hey man, all those Viking settlers that are living here, they might band together and kill you. What? Well then, why don't we kill them first? And Dang. so it was. This pissed off the Danish king, who launched an invasion, and the Vikings conquered England once again. Then the Anglo-Saxons unconquered it, then the Vikings reconquered it. The king's family had to go into exile, including Edward. Remember him? He went to Normandy where he lived for 30 years. He and his brother Alfred tried to return to England to retake the throne from the Vikings, but they were betrayed by the Earl of Wessex who said, mm. Hey friend, I'll take you to London where all the nobles are waiting to make you king. Oh no, look out, red hot poker in the eyes. I can't oh, see. Dang. And thus, you can't be king. Edward then escaped back to Normandy. After a few more Viking kings came and went, one finally died without an heir, and Edward was called back to England where he became king. And that's where yeah. our story begins. Wow. Here's the thing about becoming a king in the Middle Ages. Often your entire country won't support you at first. You can be vulnerable to rebellions, and it's up to you to take control. Yeah. Fortunately for Edward, there was already a super powerful guy who had a lot of control over England. And if Edward could get his support, then England would be his. Who is this guy? Oh, piss, it's the guy who gave my brother the red-hot poker in the eyes. <laughs> After an awkward moment where Edward exiled Godwin from the country, he eventually had to give in and let him keep his earldom, possibly after Godwin gave him a bunch of gold and said he was very, very sorry. King Edward also married Godwin's daughter. Then Godwin died, and his massive fortune was passed down to his sons, who all became earls. In particular, mm. this one became the new Earl of Wessex. Harold Godwinson was now King Edward's brother-in-law. He was a close advisor to the king, a brave warrior who had proven himself in battle against the Welsh, and in mm. many ways he was almost like a co-king. Uh-oh, Edward got old and he's on his deathbed. Possibly for religious reasons, or maybe because he wasn't happy about having to marry her, he didn't boink his wife, and as a result has no kids. Meaning wow. there's no obvious heir Dang. to the throne. Meaning I'm gonna be king. He does have a grandnephew, it could be him. Mm, now let's go with me. Just one problem. I mentioned that Edward's mother was a Norman. Edward grew up in Normandy, and he had a lot of Norman friends. The current Duke of Normandy was William the Bastard. Why was he called mm. the Bastard? One day, his father was sneaking out of his castle when his advisors said, Where are you going? Uh, to the tanner's shop. Why? To get a... Tan. <laughs> but that was a lie. Firstly, because tanners give you leather, not tans. Yeah. And secondly, yeah. because he was really going to see the tanner's daughter. One thing leads to another, and out comes baby William. Born oh, out of pregnant. wedlock. Yeah. Thus, an absolute bastard. His father died when William was seven or eight, and he became the new Duke. He spent most of his childhood narrowly avoiding assassination, which probably turned Dang. him into the big balls tough guy he's remembered as today. In 1051, the town of Alisson tried to rebel against him, and the townspeople beat on dead animal skins as an insult to his commoner mother. William mm. was furious, and he responded by, well, let's just say it wasn't pretty. That's the kind of guy we're dealing with here. Wow. William and Edward were good friends, and Edward allegedly promised that William could have the English throne after him. A decade later, oh, Harold Godwinson mm. visited William and pledged an oath to him over holy relics, promising that William could be the next king of England. Oh, Although no. it's possible mm. Harold only did it because William was holding his family hostage. So when William heard that the king was on his deathbed, he said, Hooray, I'm going to be king. So now you have two extremely powerful men who both think they're about to become the next king. Yeah. But wait. Yeah. 
This guy Challenger. is the king of Norway. He spent most of his life as a warrior for hire, fighting for whoever would give him the most gold. You name a place, he probably fought a war there. Poland? Mm. Yep. Estonia? Yep. Against pirates in the Mediterranean? Yep. The Holy mm. Lands? Sicily? And Bulgaria? Yep. He got crazy rich off the back wow. of it and was swimming in gold. Dang. Then he returned home and became king. One of the previous Norwegian kings had made an agreement with one of England's Viking kings, oh, saying that geez. when that Viking king died, the king of Norway would get the English throne. But Drada oh, felt dang. that because of this agreement, he was now entitled to the English throne. Really? He was also eager to go on one last big conquest that would turn him into a legend. So when he got word that Edward was on his deathbed, he thought, I'm going to invade England, and then I'm going to be king. So now we have three extremely powerful men who all think they're about to become the next king of England, and that means somebody's probably about to get hurt. Back in England, yeah. Harold Godwinson is watching over the dying king, Edward. Suddenly, he comes out with a shocking announcement. Hey, uh, everyone, gather in. That's it. Come closer. Don't be shy. Okay, so I've got bad news. The king is dead. Um, I know, very sad. Uh, but good news. He said that I should be the next king. So, hooray for me. And, um, oh yeah, he said that if he once told anyone else they could be king, that he doesn't like them anymore, and they should just stay in Normandy. Right, like he actually yeah. said that. Also, he said that no yeah. one should ask any further questions. <laughs> okay, good talk. Go, um, go do whatever it is you do. Usually it took months of preparation to crown a new king, but Harold rushed it and he had himself crowned the same day King Edward was buried. Oh. In Normandy, William's advisors came to him and said, Hey Big Willie, bad news, Harold Godwinson has taken the English throne. And William was furious, so he sent an envoy to Harold who said, William says you stole the throne and demands you immediately return it to him. Hmm, let me think about that. No. No. Yeah. He said no. That bastard. Wait, I thought you were the bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Uncool. <laughs> William immediately began gathering his armies together and preparing for an invasion of England. Now, killing a king was generally frowned upon in old timey Europe because they were considered to have been chosen by God himself. So back in Normandy, mm -hmm. William had to get God on his side. He needed the Pope's blessing for his conquest. So he went to the Pope and said, Godwinson made an oath to me over holy relics, <laughs> and then he usurped the throne. Can I kill him? Eh, sure, why not? So the Pope gave William his blessing, meaning wow. William now had God on his side. Everything was ready to go. Just one problem. The wind. It was blowing the wrong way, and William had to wait with his army in Normandy, while Godwinson waited with his army in the south of England. Hmm. They waited, and waited, and waited, and wow. then William said screw it and sailed for England and got shipwrecked because the wind was blowing the wrong way. Dang. So then he decided to keep on waiting. They waited for two months and the wind never changed. Eventually wow. Godwinson got bored and also ran out of food for his soldiers. So he sent them all home and he returned to London. The south coast was undefended and all William could do was keep waiting. While the northerly wind kept William in Normandy, it was carrying Hardrada and his Viking army mm -hmm. to England. Yeah. Hardrada landed near the old Viking city of York and defeated a regional army led by the northern earls and York mm. surrendered. When Godwinson heard about this, he must have been pretty upset. He had just disbanded his army, and now he had to gather them all together again and march all the way north. He made the exhausting journey in just four days, which is crazy quick, and he caught the Vikings off guard and unprepared for battle. The two armies stood on either side of the river Derwent. Legend says that a berserker Viking single-handedly held the only bridge crossing the river, dodging arrows and fending off attackers, mm. until some mm. English soldiers got under the bridge in a barrel and gave him the old spear in the jewels. <laughs> this gave Ooh. the Vikings enough time to form a shield wall, but because they had been caught off guard, many weren't wearing their chainmail and armor, and the English eventually defeated them, killing Hardrada, and with him, bringing the Viking ear in England to an end. Still waiting. Uh, oh, nah, it's always it, yeah. Finally, <laughs> William's fleet of over 700 ships and 14,000 men set sail and landed on the English coast at Pevensey and set up camp near Hastings. And Harold was still all the way in York. His exhausted army had to march all the way south yeah, just days sucks. after their battle yeah. with the Vikings. Harold made it to London and considered just staying there and waiting for William to come to him. But William forced Harold's hand by burning down a bunch of villages. Harold's Dang. army set out and met Williams on the 14th of October, 1066. And both sides prepared themselves for the Battle of Hastings. The English were on a hill, so they decided to stay there because it was a good defensive position. The Normans approached, and the two sides probably spent a while yelling at each other. William and the Normans had a few tactical advantages over the English. The first were the archers. The Normans sent volley after volley of arrows at the English, who formed Dang. a shield wall in defense. Then William sent his infantry up the hill. The English threw anything they had at them, and the Normans couldn't break through the shield wall. <laughs> then the Normans' next tactical advantage came into play. William sent his cavalry up the hill, but even they struggled to break through the shield wall defenses. Wave after wave of infantry and cavalry came, and Harold knew all he had to do was let the Normans exhaust themselves, and he would win. But then something a bit strange happened. It's possible the Normans incorrectly believed William had been killed. Maybe they lost their will to fight against the shield wall, or maybe it was an intentional deception tactic. 
But suddenly, the Norman forces turned and ran away from the English. Believing they had won, the English broke their shield wall and chased down the retreating Normans, who then turned around, encircled the English troops, and cut them down. In the chaotic mm. fighting that followed, Harold Godwinson was killed, the most popular theory being that he took an arrow in the eye. The English were defeated, and uh. William had won. He was no more just a bastard. Now, he was a conqueror. At first, the English nobles were reluctant to make him king, but William burned down a few more villages, and the nobles eventually Jeez. gave in and offered him the crown. As he was mm. coronated, the local villagers in Westminster let out a cheer of support. Port, but William thought it was a riot, so he burned down the village. <gasps> William then what had to the? go on a long and costly campaign of quelling rebellions and burning down villages all over England to force the people into submission. Wow. And England went through a massive transformation under its new Norman rule. English nobles were replaced with Normans. They built castles and grand cathedrals, but one of the most interesting changes occurred mm. within the English language. The Normans brought their dialect of French to England and emerged mm. with Old English in ways we still live with today. First of all, the Normans were obviously the ones in power, so words related to power like government, judge, castle, and crown come from the Normans. Normans. Words that are considered mm. posher or more refined are usually the Norman ones. At first, the Anglo-Saxons probably weren't that friendly to the Normans, while the Normans likely weren't that amiable towards the Anglo-Saxons. An Anglo-Saxon might come into a room, but a Norman would enter into a chamber. An Anglo-Saxon might buy themselves a shirt, while a Norman would purchase a blouse. And mm -hmm. while that filthy peasant's new shirt may be fair, the Norman blouse is absolutely beautiful. The Normans actually considered some Anglo-Saxon words so crude that I can't even say them on YouTube. But there's more. Ask an Anglo-Saxon what mm. job he does, and he might respond with some low-level trade, such as a baker, a miller, or a shoemaker. But a Norman has a skilled trade, like a painter, a tailor, or a merchant. The Anglo-Saxon farmers, mm. they were served up in a Norman banquet, they became beef, pork, and mutton. Yeah. And written English changed too. Since many Anglo-Saxons couldn't write, the written language was romanticized. Your annoying oh. friend that says cool whip might just be speaking an old English dialect, as the Anglo-Saxons originally wrote it when, where, and what, but the Normans swapped ah. the ah. H around, and the long English ah. A vowel sounded more like an O to the Normans, so you can thank them that you live in a home, not a ham. Yeah, that was a good one. I yeah. definitely didn't know anything about that word. Well, say, say, the home, how home would have been ham, but they changed it. Yeah, I didn't really completely understand that point, but he said something about... Like when, where, and where? Well, that one was, yeah, so like, kind of like the Family Guy clip where he kept saying, cool hip. Yeah. Because it was normally H W, but yeah. then the Norman way was they switched it. So it W H I P. Yeah. But still, that would be weird to be like what? Yeah. But I guess what? you would say what instead of what. Like, what? When you think about it, like what, where, when? Why is there even an H in there? Yeah. So it probably used to be where or what. Yeah. Where. Where, when. When. And they just flipped it for the. Yeah. Where? I don't know. It's yeah. just weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's definitely entertaining, man. Like I said, I like Over Five, man. Yeah, I do too. They're like really entertaining. I can sit here and stare, like, yeah. like watch it the whole time. Yeah, and it's crazy because, like, at all. he started, um, the, the bastard guy started just, like, just burning out everybody. Like, just... Yeah, because they, 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 they was, like, um, cheering, but he thought they was, like, having, like, a revolt yeah. or whatever. And that's, but that's just going to make yeah. anyone give in because you don't want to just kill all your people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, and that was like 1,066. That yeah. Was, yeah, so. A long time ago, way before any of us were around. Uh, a long time ago. Mm hmm. But yeah, man, we enjoyed it. We're about to go to the end of this video. If you want to support our channel, check out the link to our Streamlab. It's going to be in our pinned comment. Our Streamlab is Mario B and Nicole. Mm hmm. So check it out. Don't forget to subscribe. And thumbs it up. Turn on notifications. It's your man, Mario B. And Nicole. When they catch you on the next day, awesome. Peace and love,